Hey, this is Usher, and this is GQ, and we're getting ready to take a look at my style history. <laughs> oh man, yeah. The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. That lady on the right is, you know, my mom, obviously, but one of the best dressed of that time, you know. We didn't have uh, tons of money, but she knew how to put it together. She curated an entire experience there. You got my brother and his little knickers right there. That was my first time not having to wear knickers. Like as a kid, it was like uh, important to, to wear that to church. So we would wear like a sailor's top like that or either a shirt and just short pants or either like a button down, short sleeve button down and maybe a tie or a bow tie, hated it. I fought her like, man, can you please stop making me wear these knickers? I would love to uh, just wear a suit, a regular suit. So that was the first time I ever put on a suit. <laughs> I have no responsibility over what I'm wearing there. It's 100% my mom. Let me just make you understand how defiant it is to do this. It's picture day. I'm 11 years old and I'm a bit of a, a hip hop and defiant little kid. Nobody else in the school wore a hat. So I wanted to be unique. I wanted to stand out, so I decided to wear my socks cap. I was a huge Jodeci fan, and uh, KC, he wore, you know, this, this socks cap. And also to NWA, they always wore like this black cap. So I thought, man, let me just, I'm gonna wear my African beads, my Afro beads, wear my overalls. I'm gonna take one of them off, so it's like, that's my style. <laughs> and I'm gonna be the only kid in my yearbook with a baseball cap on. The necklace is Afro beads, and this time they were, in hip-hop uh, leaders of the new school and uh nubian kings and all of these cats you know tribe called quest even though i didn't really get a chance to listen to a lot of their music i knew of the culture so it was something um proud to wear those african beads to kind of represent my african heritage so the album cover was if i look back at it it was very prada you know i imagine i wanted to have like a sleek look I've even looked back at this for years and like, I wondered if I was ever somewhere on an inspiration board. Skull cap, goggles on my head. That was that was a part of my look. That was a, me attempting to establish like the thing that people would recognize me for. The reason why is because of where I was. I came from New York. I'd lived in New York City for an entire year. So I picked up a lot of that stuff. Oh, there's something else in that picture that you should notice that actually happened. This is very important. So it was the first time I ever wore my U. That was when I established that this was like a thing that you would know me for and it would it would stay with me up until this day. My record company granted me enough money to, to work on a piece of jewelry because I was adamant like, yo, I'm living in a time where you gotta have something like a piece of jewelry or something that, that says who you are. This is a part of the culture. So I went to the jeweler I kind of, you know, sketched out a design. I wanted to have a U and I wanted it to be in a circle, almost like an emblem or, you know, you think of Mercedes, you think of, you know, those those things, you think of any brand, it's always kind of surrounded in a circle. So that became my branded U. I think that um, I can't take any responsibility for anything you see in that, that shot because I didn't style it. <laughs> and I, I really, it was a character. It was a character who was an entertainer by the name of Raymond, by the, by the way, but, uh, yeah, that wasn't, wasn't really my take. <laughs> a lot of things in this look. So this look was established when I made uh, the My Way video. It's actually the jacket from My Way. I still have it to this day. Uh, it's a leather jacket that I had spray painted um, graphics all over. You know, I always found a way to be inspired by the things that I actually couldn't afford when I was a, a child. So my pants, if you look at them, the, the I actually made these pants uh, with a designer out in Los Angeles, Jonathan Logan. We kind of mimicked the silhouette of Jabot jeans because I, I at the time, as a kid, I always wanted a pair of Jabot jeans, but I couldn't afford them. So that became a part of my expression as an artist. Sometimes simple is better, you know what I'm saying? It's me, the tank top, it's, 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 it's just, to me, I guess it was a step up from wearing, you know, a, uh, a Hanes or either a Calvin Klein, you know, uh, tank top. Uh, what I have wrapped around my head, once again, became something else that I was kind of known for. I would take a t-shirt or either a, um, a tank top and wrap it tight and then I'd make a little knot back here in the back. 
um, again, that just, you know, I always try my hardest to find those things that were my own and uh, that kind of represented a little bit of where I came from. <laughs> You know, sometimes a little bit more, right? This is once again a tank top, but I added a dog tag. Um, I have a do rag on, and also to a baseball cap. I had on a Dolce and Gabbana racers jacket. It was a time that they were kind of doing these um, Ferrari collaborations. You know, these kind of racer or either motorcycle jackets, structural, you know, jackets that had like a bit of a lift. I always thought about how Michael Jackson always went towards militant looks. So I wanted to go towards like, you know, more sports um, or like active sports looks, but put it with jeans. This is around the time that I began to establish like, okay, I'm gonna wear jeans and always wear like a one of one type jacket. All great fashion trends make their way back around. It's just, a, it's just cyclical in that way where if something was, you know, meaningful in a time then it's going to make its way back if people just want to you know kind of feel like they're in that era Get to a place nice and quiet there ain't no one better to ain't got a rush i just want to take it nice. well i mean if you're shooting in front of you know monumental sites got to be in your best you know this is the first really major video I um, I shot with Hype Williams. I can remember like only silk, only like ex the most expensive fabrics had to be used in this because we wanted the fashion to, to feel up. You know, the song was saying something very specific, but we shot it in Paris. And man, I'm, sh I'm in front of the Eiffel Tower. Even if you look at the video, like every bit of what was, you know, being, said in that video was kind of setting up this aesthetic to be a little bit more sophisticated. You know what I mean? Silks and like velvet fabrics, Versace, I think that was at, at the top. The pants were Versace as well. But I always kept, you know, a little bit of what I do and who I am in it. You got my U chain in it. Now, of course, I, my chest is out. <laughs> and uh, the other was a stocking cap that I always wore. That was um, a, a major part of my teens in between 17 and like 20. I don't remember the model of the glass, but I do remember how important all of those things were in that shot. I do know that Sean John, they made those pants for me for that video. You know, this was like a new concept around what you felt about R&B. When I think about those classic shots that I had seen like James Brown or either Little Richard take that were R&B, they always had like this really like classic mic. So all of the things that were there were intended to make you feel like this is a new generation of like a different type of R&B artist. It's like a little bit of hip hop, but a little, but a lot of soul and the dance and all of those things, they actually played a major part in it as well. But yeah, you see me with a cut off t-shirt, I cut the sleeves off. Um, once again, had my dog tags and my you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I have a pair of jeans on, a crew neck t-shirt, a uh, button down shirt with a little bit of color and a, uh, a white blazer. Oversized, of course, because I, I always needed to be able to move. I needed a lot of space. And then to add the final touches on it, I put my A cap on to the side. This is, a, this is the first time that I ever allowed people to you know, know the culture of where I came from. Of course, I had been making music and, you know, wearing whatever it is that I felt would kind of give me some kind of signature. But this, this was like, it wrapped all of the things that I had to offer into one package. It was a little bit of, you know, Atlanta, a little bit of like fashion because, you know, man, I'm trying to get to a place where I have something that I know that you can recognize me for instantly. And it's a little sophisticated too, because we were coming out of wearing like throwback jerseys. Everybody was wearing throwback jerseys. And that was like the trend of the times. Actually my stylist, um, who I ended up marrying and having children with, she created that look along with um, a stylist by the name of Bria. But this look, man, it was, it was really a risk taker for me. And I think afterwards I start seeing all types of like other artists even, you know, kind of embody it. 
Yeah, it was cool though. It was one of them ones. Well, you probably are just noticing it, but at that time, I think that that was, once again, me grabbing things that were culturally sound for me, right? Wearing long johns underneath a pair of shorts was something that we did in the South. We did it primarily because we'd have to stand, you know, on the corner to wait for the bus. So it was really cold outside. So it was more a thing like, you know what, you know, this is our style. You wear long johns, wear a pair of shorts and, you know, oversized sweater or either starter jacket. So I just brought that a little bit back towards the stage. I literally designed that with um, Sean John. Yeah, it was for stage, you know, it was a bit of glad. It was a bit of glam, right? So I, want, I always try my hardest to give a little fantasy when I'm on stage. The sneakers were um, Air Force Ones. They were leather Air Force Ones. It was crazy. Like that was the only shoe I would dance in. <laughs> had to be a fresh pair of Air Force Ones, but those made an entire tour because they were super leather and had like, they were super dense, but I'd beat them down by the end of the tour. Yeah, so this look was inspired by three things. I think Alexander Plakoff at the time were doing a very specific uh, jean. And I really, I really wanted the, the drop crotch, but I wanted it to still, you know, be very uh, tailored here. The jacket, uh, me and Kirby Raymond of Pierre Moss, we, we did that. Um, it was a very specific silhouette at that time. And a kind of rounded scoop t-shirt. I wore that jacket a lot. I wore that silhouette a lot. Well, to support up and coming talent, you know, there, here you have me at Wales Bonner and I'm kind of out and about in Paris doing fashion week. I mean, I think it's important to, to stay connected to the culture. I think that these young designers are, you know, in a position to pave the way, uh, support them because I think that one, they have incredible pieces and uh, the other half is to collaborate with them. Like for instance, with Bianca Saunders, having the opportunity to, to take her to the Met, having her design that piece for me and work in conjunction with her giving her details man we went over that thing so many times I, I think we spent like at least five hours trying to get the back to sit up and, and working with the muslin and then before you know it we had the actual fabric and then we had to bring in uh, extra stretch material but uh just i love that process i love being able to collaborate with with young designers because they're willing to take you know the risk thank you gq for this moment this has been my style history and i hope that you have enjoyed it